To begin the test, you're in the Test Setup tab. You want to first select the impulse type, lateral, LARP, which is left anterior, right posterior, or RAUP, which is right anterior, left posterior. When you choose lateral, notice that the lateral head trace is in bold. If you choose LARP, the blue head trace for LARP is in bold, and if you choose RAUP, the pink head trace for the RAUP is in bold. This is because you're determining which plane of the gyroscopes you're recording from. So lateral will be a horizontal plane, LARP would be running from left anterior to right posterior, and RALP would be running a plane from right anterior to left posterior. The other thing I want to point out is, let's go back to lateral and look at the training curves. When I choose lateral, and then when I choose LARP and RALP, they're changing. So you have to make sure you choose the correct test for what you're getting ready to perform on the patient. Let's go back to lateral. For patients with spontaneous nystagmus, select the checkbox. Spontaneous nystagmus. It prevents good impulses from being rejected inappropriately. Pupil detection is performed to ensure the system tracks the pupil properly prior to calibration. Position the pupil in the ROI region of interest. Over here in the test setup, you see the green square. You want to make sure the pupil is positioned within the green square. You can do this either by left-clicking and dragging the green square or clicking on the pupil to center the pupil inside the green box. So let's click on the pupil, and now the green box is centered. And as you can see over on the left-hand side, the white is the pupil and the black is the background. Once you have the pupil centered in the green ROI box, you want to click OK. Now you see the real-time trace. The orange is the head and the green is the eye. You can look at the pupil in one of two ways, grayscale image or pupil location. When it is in pupil location, the pupil is white and the background is black. In grayscale, the white cross signifies the pupil. If you're going to be doing a video recording, the grayscale image is what you want to use. Otherwise, I find pupil location to be more user friendly. If the pupil has not been identified, you want to select auto threshold. The system centers the crosshair on the pupil. If you want to video record the eye during the head impulse testing, you have two options. Use the control buttons to manually start and stop the video recording. To start the video recording at the same time as data collection starts, select the checkbox Auto Record, which will set the software to always simultaneously start the video recording when head impulse data collection starts. Now the patient will stare at the fixation dot. Observe the green eye trace in the real-time trace window, ensuring that it is a as flat as possible when the patient is fixating on the fixation dot. Turn the lasers on. There are two laser dots projected on the wall. Ask the patient to look at the left dot, then the right dot. This ensures the camera is tracking the pupil. If the crosshair fails to track the pupil, jumps around, or does not stay centered on the pupil, move the threshold slider to make further adjustments. Adjust the pupil detection by clicking plus or minus or by sliding the bar. The pupil detection for V-HIT and VOR are very similar, and I'll show you the difference with all the other tests. So for V-HIT and VOR, you have a region of interest box that's 100 by 100 pixels, and here's the VOR. And that's because we're collecting the data at 250 frames per second. When we go to the other test, we'll go to gaze here, you have a box that is 100 and 60 by 120. Otherwise, all the pupil detection is exactly the same. The screen does look a little different for all tests. Outside of V-HIT, you have a gray real-time trace window that shows you the eye in green and the head in orange. But the pupil detection procedure is exactly the same for all tests.